Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Chris, your NFL writer here at OccupyFantasy.com, here with another preview video for the running back position for the Week 10 slates on FanDuel and DraftKings. Dropping these position previews every single week throughout the rest of the regular season and postseason, so if you like that, please subscribe to the channel below. We'd also appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up on the video or leave a comment if you have any questions about anything. We'd be happy to talk to you about it down there. There is one situation that is going to be pretty common in all lineups, on all platforms that you play on this week. And it is the Cleveland Browns running back. Cleveland Browns have Nick Chubb on uh, the COVID restricted list right now. They also have Kareem Hunt on the actual injured reserve. And Demetric Felton. We're going that deep with this. Demetric Felton is also unavailable to play for the Browns because he is also on the COVID restricted list. Tested positive alongside Nick Chubb earlier this week. So they're all unavailable to play. You see that right here. They have... Nobody other than Dearness Johnson available. $4,700 here on DraftKings. $5,400 on FanDuel. This is a team that is pretty run heavy. and They run very effectively. They have the third best run blocking offensive line in football. So regardless of the matchup, regardless of the fact that they're headed to Gillette Stadium to face the Patriots, everyone is going to be focused on Dearness Johnson because he's very affordable. And as this point projects for virtually all of the touches out of the running back position for the Cleveland Browns. They did add a running back uh, to their practice squad, Brian Hill formerly of the Atlanta Falcons and Tennessee Titans. So he'll be an option, but probably will not be someone that will be looking to roster here this week. So outside of that situation, we obviously have the usual suspects to consider. The first one playing for the highest team total offense on the slate behind the best run blocking offensive line in football right now. After a pretty poor game last week for his team, Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys, once again, a strong option here. His price has not moved. $7,000 again here on DraftKings. $8,000 on FanDuel. Still seeing over 50% of the carries for the Cowboys, 10% of team targets. And the Falcons are allowing the seventh most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs in the league this year. So... After a game that was virtually 30 to nothing for like, you know, 55 plus minutes, uh, hopefully the Cowboys will be a little more efficient, be able to punch in some some drives for touchdowns where Zeke still has the, the highest ownership of a red zone role, you know, out of anybody in the Dallas Cowboys. So he'll be a good option to consider once again here against the Falcons. Welcoming back Leonard Fournette to the conversation after a bye week. A player that I guess they just refused to price up a little more than this. 6100 here on DraftKings here for Week 10. Um, still basically the main guy in the Bucks backfield. Ronald Jones, nothing to be spoken about really. Not not seeing a ton of touches. Gi- Giovanni Bernard only mixing in, you know, in passing situations, two-minute drills, uh, stuff like that. So see, uh, Leonard Fournette still extremely involved for the Bucks. Has... Uh, 58% of the carries, 13% of team targets on the season. Actually, that's, that's over the last three weeks of play, but pretty close to his share on the season. And now facing a, a football team defense is actually pretty tough against running backs, but still playing for a pretty high team total offense with the Bucks and starting to look like one of the more healthy, you know, starter caliber options for them. Antonio Brown unlikely to play this week. Chris Godwin popping on the injury report. So Fournette right up there as one of their most healthy starting caliber players in the offense for this game. Jonathan Taylor, for the Colts, large home favorite running back, off of a great game against the Jets, now facing a Jacksonville defense that is actually a little tougher against the run than they are against the pass. This is your quote-unquote funnel defense. Jaguars are 31st in terms of efficiency and yards per attempt allowed to quarterbacks, but just third in terms of yards per carry uh, allowed to running backs. So there's a kind of a simple way of evaluating the matchup. Could be a better game for Carson Wentz and the passing weapons than it is for Jonathan Taylor, but this is still Jonathan Taylor and he's one of the best backs in the National Football League right now in a really strong spot and probably will be a staple of low-risk lineups this week as a result, given the fact that we have access to a cheap option in Terrence Johnson that I talked about at the top, off the top of the video here. So where else can we go on this slate? It's uncertain who will start for the Buffalo Bills, but the Buffalo Bills have the best matchup on the slate for the running back position. The New York Jets allow the most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs. Not just the most, the most by about 10 points over any other defense in the league. So like the Jets are in a league of their own in terms of a poor defense against running backs. But is it going to be Zach Moss, who left last week uh, with a concussion? Or is it going to be Devin Singletary, who uh, 
uh, doesn't usually get the majority of the running back touches unless Zach Moss is out of the lineup. And there is at least a chance that if Zach Moss can't go because of that concussion, somebody like Matt Breida actually gets elevated and sees some action here in Week 10. So this backfield is actually looking like it may be one we're going to take down to Friday afternoon, maybe even right up to Sunday to sort of figure out who's actually going to be playing for them. They're all relatively affordable. Uh, you'd see here Singletary $400 cheaper than Moss on DraftKings. Moss and Singletary the same price on FanDuel. I do think if Moss is out, you will see Devin Singletary become one of the most popular plays on the slate here at the running back position, given the matchup. And then it's not just the Jets that give up a lot of fantasy points to opposing running backs. It's also the Detroit Lions. And that means Najee Harris is going to be somebody that a lot of fantasy players are looking to use this week, given that he has the strongest role at the position out of any player in the league right now. Um... 82% 82% of the carries for uh, anybody that rushes the football for the Steelers over the last three weeks of play. 14% of team targets. Really, really elite role uh, to touch the football for Najee Harris. Just 7,900 here on DraftKings. 9,400 on FanDuel. He'll probably be very popular against the Lions. Cordaro Patterson. Once again, talking about CPAT. CPAT had a big catch at the end of the last game sort of bailed us out a little bit to get us over 20 points. But the reason that he's able to do that for us is because he still has... You know, this offensive weapon role where he's seeing five plus targets and nine to ten carries per game for this team. His carry shared has evened out with Mike Davis. You know, after that game last week against the Saints, Mike Davis was a little more involved. So Davis and Patterson seeing basically equal opportunities to carry the football for the Falcons behind that offensive line over the last three weeks of play for them. Patterson seeing 19% of team targets, second most on the team behind Kyle Pitts. This is still a mid price weapon. You know, for the context of your overall lineup, that has an elite role. $6,600 here on DraftKings, $7,800 over on FanDuel. Only running back eligible, and he is competing with some of these other guys that are going to see, you know, a lot more raw touches out of traditional uh, running back positions. You know, they'll see more carries, certainly. But CPAT's target-specific role actually gives him a much higher floor, specifically in PPR formats, and that's something that we're looking for, especially on DraftKings, especially this week against the Cowboys, where this may end up being one of the more popular game stack environments on the slate. Patterson's ownership could end up being decently high as a result. Those are my favorite ones that I'm looking at this week. There are some other spots that obviously we should address and should talk about. Elvin Kamara does project as the quote-unquote best running back once again for me here in Week 10. Uh, 8,200 on DraftKings, 8,000 on FanDuel. But there's some concern he actually rolled his ankle, uh, similar to Chase Edmonds for the Arizona Cardinals last week. Uh, Kamara not necessarily ruled out just yet, but Kamara obviously going to be someone to watch if that is kind of the case here. Christian McCaffrey did return to the lineup for the Panthers last week, and his price is nowhere near what he was the last couple of years when he was just the most elite and reliable weapon in the game. 8,400 on DraftKings, 9,000 on FanDuel. This is a pretty tough matchup against the Cardinals. You know, they're actually, I want to say, seventh in terms of how they rank defending running backs in the running game and then sixth in the passing game. Uh, McCaffrey also going to be playing with his backup quarterback, P.J. Walker of XFL fame. Uh, so we'll see if that, that he's actually, A, able to play a larger share of the snaps and therefore get more touches, and B, we'll see if this offense is able to be more efficient than it was under Darnold with their backup. That's kind of questionable. Uh, Dalvin Cook and Austin Eckler will be probably featured in a lot of lineups just because we expect the Chargers and the Vikings to be stacked pretty heavily in high-risk contests. And obviously both those guys fit uh, with those game stacks as the uh, uh, starting running backs for their teams. And we'll see come Sunday if there's any changes with the Vikings due to some ongoing news. So that's something to watch. Uh, Aaron Jones has slowly been losing uh, touch opportunity and volume to A.J. Dillon. So he becomes maybe a high-risk only option now at the position. You know, going to have to watch what happens with Green Bay. Another game that I think is an interesting one to stack, Green Bay at Seattle. Seattle on the other side of this game, I don't don't have a projection for him just yet, but Chris Carson has been designated to return from injured reserves, who was able to begin practicing for the Seahawks. So he'll be another player people will be looking at, potentially, if they're going to be stacking the Seahawks and the Packers like I likely will be. That is going to do it for this look at running backs in Week 10. You know, it's early in the week. We are still digesting news, digesting situations. And as, again, talked about with specific to the COVID situation with the Browns, this really, really cheap running back is probably going to be the highest on player on the entire slate this week. Don't overthink it. 
probably should just play Dearness Johnson and then figure out what to do everywhere else in your lineup this week. If we do get to the end of the week and Nick Chubb isn't reinstated or anything like that, Dearness Johnson's going to be the best play on the slate. Don't even worry about it. Just take it and move on. That's going to do it for this rundown. Thank you for watching. As always, I'm Chris, your NFL writer here at Occupy Fantasy. If you have any questions, once again, please leave any in the comment section below. We'll be happy to talk to you there. Consider joining our Discord. You can go in there and talk to other Occupy staff and members about every single sport every single day. We'll be happy to do that for you. Keep an eye out for the Daily Plug. It'll be out on Friday. That's when we go over our top plays for Sunday's NFL action. We'll have not just our favorite running back plays, but top quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, and not just the fav- our favorite players, but the our favorite way to deploy them in the type of contest that you're playing, whether that's low-risk contests, you know, 50-50s, double-ups, head-to-heads, or high-risk contests. You want to make sure that you're using the right strategy for the right contest. That's the most important aspect of playing DFS after all. Once again, thank you for watching. I am Chris for Occupy, and we'll talk to you soon.